Hey, maybe some of you um, that follow the liturgical calendar in the life of the church know that um, we are about to celebrate something that is traditionally called the Day of Pentecost on this Sunday. And uh, the devotions this week are kind of kind of lead up to uh, this celebration and uh, prepare us for that day. And so I want to be in um, Acts chapter one this morning and just kind of highlight some things that I think is worth mentioning. It says, in my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Remember that. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Once, uh, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, don't leave or do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, verse 5, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to feel uh, to free Israel and to restore our kingdom, he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But, but, watch this, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, uh, what amazes me about this passage are, are really a couple things. One, it talks about Jesus like showing himself to be alive, right? Like this is after his resurrection. Uh, he's with his disciples over the course of 40 di uh, days at different times. Uh, he meets with people like Thomas, right? On one of those occasions, he reveals his scars and his hands and his feet and his side, right? He he goes and he talks to the to the guys on the road to Emmaus who didn't recognize him until he actually serves communion. And then how can we forget that moment when he gives his disciples the great commission, right? But here I'm drawn to something like the first um thing that Jesus really deals with with his disciples as he's as he's teaching them he's teaching them about the kingdom the kingdom of God and, and then Jesus tells them not to leave Jerusalem notice until the father sends the spirit it's, it's as if he knows that they might get anxious that they might head home that they might uh, forget the mission and the vision that they might be traumatized by you know their disappointment and he's saying to them whatever you do don't leave until you get this. Like you will need this. You will have to have this and everything that I'm teaching. But then it amazes me that the disciples, they start to question um, Jesus and their questions seem to like indicate that they're missing the message. Did you notice that? Like they asked Jesus about how he will restore their, or in this text, it says our kingdom. <laughs> and Jesus redirects the question and he reminds them, of the mission and vision. Like don't focus on your kingdom, focus on the kingdom, on the kingdom of God. Like your little kingdom makes it basically saying it, it will come and go, uh, but the Holy Spirit will empower you to be my witnesses uh, in, in the here, the near, the far and the hard places. And so I don't know about you, but I think like our humanity, our fallen humanity has a tendency to focus primarily on our lower story or our personal kingdoms and what's going on with us at a micro level. And although God believes that that story and what's happening in our lives is important, like we can't forget that there's always an upper story. There's always uh, something else that God's doing. There's a greater plan, a, micro, a macro plan that God uh, includes us in. And he wants us to know that he's passionate. He's passionate about both. So here's my question. Are you concerned about a kingdom of this world more than the kingdom of God. Are you? Ask God to help you get back to his mission and his vision today. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, thank you for this word in Acts 1. Thank you for the lessons we learned through uh, the lives of these apostles, these disciples, these leaders. And God, it's so easy to get off mission, to get off uh, take our eyes off of what you want in terms of the vision of the church. 
particularly in trying times, difficult times when there's a lot going around us. And so, God, I pray that as you redirected them uh, as they led up to the day of Pentecost, would you redirect us today? Uh, would you help us to take our eyes off of any kingdom um, that is not yours and, uh, and that we would truly embrace the mission, the vision, the call that you have for our lives? We love you. We thank you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. We'll see you soon.